What's up everybody? It's Brian from the Business Reef Tank channel. I'm back again to give you another video. Today I'm going to give you an update on my bubble tip anemone tank for February 2019. Now I also want to talk about a new product that I'm going to start using in this tank which is called Nim Protect. Now let's go ahead and get right on into the update. There have been no splits in the bubble tip anemone tank for the month of February. So this is a good and a bad thing. I love to have new NIMS from splits, but at the same time, I don't want to have to deal with too many more NIMS. I'm starting to get pretty full in the bubble tip anemone tank. One thing that I do like about the bubble tip anemone tank is almost every time I look at it, I see changes. It is a constantly in change type of system. Bubble tips pretty much have a mind of their own and they would move around from place to place sometimes. If I change the flow up, they may move around. And I've also moved a couple of the rot nims from the left side of the tank to the right side of the tank. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions about how the system is set up overall. First off, let's answer the questions about the lighting. So the lighting in the bubble tip and enemy tank is a Radeon G3 Pro. This is running on a Ecotech RMS mount. So you have the standard height that you have for radions in a system with that mount. I'm running the Coral Labs AB Plus schedule from my WXM. I'm running this at 44% intensity and uh, from time to time, every few weeks or so, I do try to raise this up about 1%. I'm trying to get it to the point where I don't have any ZOAs trying to stretch for the light, so that's kind of going to be my, my end point is when the ZOAs stop stretching. Now I've also been getting a lot of questions about what do you feed? Do you feed the bubble tip and enemies themselves? Do you broadcast feed the tank? What I do is I have a Apex auto feed system and that's going to feed the fish pellets one time a day. Now about every other day or pretty much when I, I feel, I like to feed the tank LRS. The reason I do that, I do like to target feed the anemones this stuff. I also buy uh, flat packs of mysis, PE mysis, and I will feed the fish that as well and, and the anemones. I do like to target feed all of the anemones when I do this, and it tends to make them grow faster. It, I don't think it really helps with splitting too much, but they do tend to grow faster than, than what I would expect if I didn't feed them. Now, I also feed a lot of other live foods. I grow my own phytoplankton, so I feed that. With the phytoplankton, I have rotifer cultures and I also have copepi cultures. So I feed that to the bubble tip and enemy tank and I also feed it to the 180 gallon reef. Now flow is done by one MP10. Now I've been thinking about adding another MP10 to the back of the system. I'm not getting the flow that I really want to get and that's probably because the bubble tips are a lot larger than when I first started this tank out. So how I ended up getting the NIM Protect is I went to BRS to pick up another wet side for the second MP10 that I have and I saw this NIM Protect device. Basically what it is, it covers up the MP10 so you protect your anemones. Now right now in my tank I have the foam covers for the MP10s and these work pretty well but I do have a couple of problems with the foam covers. They get dirty extremely quick and when they do get dirty, they slow the flow down. And I believe they probably become a nitrate trap as more and more junk gets into the foam. Now my foam uh, filters here, they get nasty really quick. I probably have about two days before they look like this. And I really hate it when it looks like this. I mean, they're great to help filter out the water. All the gunk and detritus that gets into the foam guards I believe will basically cause a nitrate factory and raise my nutrients, which is something I really don't want to do right now. So I saw the NIM Protect. It is basically a 3D printed plastic cover that goes over the MP10. Uh, it's made out of plastic, so it won't affect anything negatively in the tank. It's supposed to just slip on the wet side and has small holes to protect the NIM so it can't get into the propeller and get cut up. Nobody wants to come home and see their bubble tip anemones have been cut up on an MP10 or any other kind of powerhead. Now, the biggest thing when these foam guards get full, they reduce the flow. 
there's a lot of maintenance involved in it. Well, re not really a lot of maintenance, but I have to go in, I have to pull the foam guards out. And right now, I'm rotating three separate foam guards on my MP10s. And like I said, I, I have to rotate these every few days. So it is something I, I you know, I don't want to keep sticking my hand in the water. So these NIM protects are supposed to reduce the maintenance because now you're not having to remove the foam guards every couple of days. And it shouldn't have any flow loss because once again, it's not going to get gunked up with all the detritus and everything else in the tank. So I got these from BRS. Um, a normal wet side for MP10 costs about $65. The Nimprotec costs $31.99. I think it is a little expensive for what it is, but this is reef keeping. Everything is expensive. Now the Nimprotec has a pretty slick design. It is made out of 3D printed material. All you really do is you stick the wet side into the cage and it snaps in. Now this is going to protect your anemones or any other creatures from being eaten up by the propellers. Now in order to get the wet side out, it's a pretty simple procedure also. All you do is you pop up the top, push the wet side back through, and now you can clean both things. Very simple. I like it. Let's see how it works in the tank. So I have the Nimprotect in the tank now. You will notice that the cage is larger than the standard size of the wet side. So you do have to get used to it being a little bit larger in the tank. But outside of that, it looks like it's working pretty good. I can see the flow hitting the anemones. And I believe that it will probably produce a little bit more flow than what the MP10 was doing with the foam covers on the wet side. Let's see how this reacts over time. So that's it for this video. That's the Nimprotex that I'm gonna use on the system. I'll let you know how these are in the next couple of uh, weeks. This is just my initial reaction. I like the idea. I really hope they work out. I wanna use something like this in my system. Well, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions about the bubble tip anemone tank. Let me know if you've used the Nimprotect and if you like it or if you don't like it. As always, YouTube, happy reefing. Take care.